Over the past five weeks, Israel has conducted a military operation in Gaza that has now killed over 10,000 people, 4,500 of which are children, so certainly not enemy combatants. And this operation has also now reportedly hit over 250 healthcare facilities and displaced over 1.5 million people. This is a humanitarian disaster on a scale that the world has not seen in a tremendous amount of time. And unfortunately, we have Israeli officials with rhetoric over the past week that is far beyond explosive. Um, I mean, this these are statements that we're going to look at here, which are quite frankly unbelievable that anyone in government could actually say something like this, especially a government that claims to be a democracy. And over the past week also, there's been a shift in the rhetoric of Israeli officials in media interviews that they have been giving um, across Western media outlets, and I've been watching these from a variety of different angles, where they have been trying to link this conflict that Israel is now involved in with World War II, and saying that this is essentially Israel's World War II, that this is their good versus evil battle, and these black and white lines in what happened, they're trying to apply all of this to what's going on right now in the Middle East. And the question is then, well, does that really apply or does it not? But when you have government officials saying things like Netanyahu's Minister of Jerusalem Affairs and its Heritage Minister, so the minister in the Israeli government responsible for Jerusalem's heritage, said not only are there no non-combatants in Gaza, meaning that everybody is a legitimate target, but that nuclear weapons are, quote, an option to be used. Now, the Western world is sitting back for the most part with a relatively hands-off approach, politically speaking, that is refusing to condemn this, that is refusing to say that, you know what, a ceasefire might be required. A ceasefire might be the only thing that, es that stops this from escalating into a regional, if not global, conflict. Something that I've warned about here repeatedly since covering these events. But that's not all. We have another Israeli government official who wrote on X, quote, Erase Gaza from the face of the earth. Let the Gazan monsters rush to the southern border and flee into Egypt or die. Now, it's hard to even know where to take this discussion after quoting something like that. Um, but suffice it to say that if you have people in your government that are saying things like that, you might want to get them out of the government because they are people that evidently cannot be trusted with the use of military force in any legitimate way whatsoever. Now, Netanyahu did at least suspend this Jerusalem Affairs and Heritage Minister, but Netanyahu himself has been citing Bible verses to justify what Israel is currently doing in Israel. Now, I'm sorry for those of you out there that may be more religious than others, but when you're citing Bible verses to justify your foreign policy decisions, for me, that is when you have immediately disqualified yourself from any position in any legitimate government on the face of the earth. Now, Israel did suffer a terrorist attack. Israel did suffer a horrendous event that was brought upon it by Hamas. And I'm certainly not saying that Israel shouldn't defend itself. It should. And it should go after the people that were responsible for what happened. It should not collectively punish over 2 million people with a bombing campaign that is indiscriminately destroying entire cities and towns and villages and creating untold human suffering. Because this is a complete disaster and it's something that the world just does not need. I'm Stuart Hooper. I'm a lecturer in international politics, political science, 
Subscribe to the channel if you're new here. Follow me on X if you're watching there. I'm posting full videos on X and YouTube. Really focusing on X right now though. Love this platform. It's growing. Thank you all for the support out there. Um, and I'm trying to approach this as with all geopolitical issues from a very critical angle. I'm not really concerned with taking sides um, in issues like this. Because what often happens and what we're seeing here is that everybody just really ends up in the wrong when you pursue militarism. And the only winners that come out on top here are members of the military industrial complex. And if you go and look at the big five in the military industrial complex, your Northrop Grumman's, your Boeing's, your Lockheed Martin's, these players, for the most part, their stock price has been doing really well over the past month. Why do you think that is? Because they're really happy and excited about the prospect of selling more bombs, more tanks, more jets, more missiles into these conflicts. These are the only people that win during these events. Now, like I mentioned, Israel has been referencing over the past week, again and again, that this is its World War II moment, that there are similarities to World War II here, and they are trying to bring up this really black and white depiction of World War II that we are sold in the Western world, that this was a fight of good versus evil. Now, yes, Hitler and the Nazis were absolutely evil, and if you want to point to one force on Earth that was perhaps purely evil in nature, if you want to go down that a black and white um, dichotomous worldview, I think the Nazis pretty much fit that mold perfectly. But was the Allied response to Nazism, to Hitler's invasion of Western Europe, to the Japanese Imperial forces in Asia, was, was that brilliant? Was that perfect? Was that without error? Was that without collateral damage? Absolutely not. Just look at what happened during World War II, the firebombing of German cities, Dresden in particular. If you go and read about what actually happened in those German cities to those people that were firebombed, you will read stories of people that dived into the rivers in these cities to try to escape from the raging fires around them who were boiled alive in the rivers of these German cities that were firebombed. Innocent civilians that were completely destroyed, completely decimated by this firebombing. And exactly the same thing also happened in Japan long before the United States dropped not one, but two nuclear bombs on two Japanese cities, killing hundreds of thousands of people. And then after World War II, of course, we move into the Cold War and Korea and Vietnam and Africa and basically every continent on the planet with military escalations and disasters on all sides, military coups, assassinations, military disasters the world over. And again, we're sold this view that this was just good versus evil. War is never good versus evil. War is always the worst possible outcome that we can reach as human beings. Warfare is the ultimate failure of politics. It's the ultimate failure of human potential to reason, to think things through, to come to a, a conclusion that has compromise as its foundation. It's just an abdication of human duty to civilization. So this is my overall point when it comes to what Israel is currently doing. Israel has thrown its international image completely under the bus. I was just watching um, a clip of the Iranian president delivering a speech with a bunch of the other uh, Arab nations throughout the Middle East, and he was calling for Islamic unity. Yes, Iran, Saudi Arabia, traditional enemies they were already coming closer together earlier this year and now he's calling for the whole middle east to unite against israel and this sure is looking like it could be a good justification for them to do that and what does that mean for israel nothing good as i mentioned 
Israel suffered a tremendous human disaster. What Israel went through on October the 7th, I can't imagine being there. I can't imagine going through that. I can't imagine that happening to people that I know, people that I care about. It was horrific. But the response that they have chosen to unleash here is going to have consequences that reverberate not throughout the region, but the entire world for literally generations to come. I, sh I saw a post earlier on X a couple of days ago, and someone was saying that, yeah, this is going to be a big problem for Israel and the next generation of Palestinians. The next, the next generation? The next one generation? No, 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 no. This is going to be a problem for Israel for 50, 60, 70, 100 years, perhaps the rest of Israel's existence. That is the degree of problem that they have created here. And when you look within Gaza and around half of its population being children, are all of those children going to grow up to forgive and forget? No, they're not. This is called blowback. This is what the, uh, the State Department, the Western world refuses to acknowledge that if you go around the world and start blowing people up and killing them, that they may want to come back and kill you too. Yes, it's not just radical ideologies that send people down a path of violence. It's not just poverty that send people into a path of violence. It can be blowback. It can be, it can be you killed me, so I'm going to go and kill you. Israel is just opening the door to this unlike ever before with 2 million people. So we can hope that we don't end up going down that road, but unfortunately, I think at this point, it's almost guaranteed. Thankfully, we had the French president, Emmanuel Macron, who in the aggregate, I'm certainly no fan of. I'm not a fan of any of these Western elites, these, these Middle Eastern elites, the Iranian president, the French president. I'm not a fan of any of these people. Um... But at least Macron came out and said, Israel, it's time to stop killing women and children. And he specifically said, it's really hard to say you're fighting terrorists when most of the people that you're killing are civilians. And we see most people in the West, I think it's somewhere around 66, 68% of people in the United States want a ceasefire. There are Israelis that want a ceasefire, Israeli hostage families that want a ceasefire, um, which imagine being one of those people. Imagine your sister, your brother, your kids, your mother, your dad has been captured, taken hostage by Hamas in a horrific terrorist incident. They've been taken into Gaza. And how does your government respond? By practically carpet bombing the entire region. Yeah, you can see why those people are going to be pretty angry too. The Israeli government has opened a can of worms here that I'm not sure it really understands right now. And the consequences that these are going to unleash for decades and decades and decades to come. Please follow the page here if you are new. Please subscribe to the channel if you're watching on YouTube and you made it this way, uh, this far to the end. I'm putting out more regular videos now. Um, I used to do videos where I would show articles and things like that, but um, I really don't have time to do that. So this is almost perhaps descending, or perhaps you guys prefer this, um, into me ranting and raving for 10 to 15 minutes for an episode. Um, but I think that this is, this is more useful. Um, I can get my raw thoughts out to the world like this. I'm still taking that critical approach, but really allowing my views, my opinions to be a little bit freer than they were in my old format. Really appreciate the growth and support on X in particular. Um, you guys are great. Really appreciate the support. A big shout out to Jason Burmas and Havori Moric over at Geopolitics and Empire. You two sharing my videos has done wonders. Um, I really appreciate it. Um, but yeah, we need to keep covering this from a critical angle, everyone. Um, we can't just sit back. We can't just say, well, these are good guys and these are bad guys. No. War is bad. Conflict is bad. Militarism is bad. And if we as a species really want to grow 
and do something great with ourselves, we need to start solving our problems in a dramatically different way. Thank you all for watching. I'll be back with more videos this week.